Welcome to today's Grow It Green. I'm Ray Brewer, and I'm joined as always by Margaret Hagen from UNH Cooperative Extension. And Margaret, we're going to be talking about today a disease we thought we had under control, but it's back. <laughs> it's back, but it is still under control. We're just trying to take some preventive measures so that it doesn't go out of control. Okay. And based on what we're seeing here, we've right. seen some white pines, right? Right. And the disease is called white pine blister rust. It came back to this country, well, it came to this country in the 1890s, early 1900s from Europe. And between 1917 and about 1986, there were huge efforts made to eradicate it because white pine is one of the hosts and it's also a very important forest product for New Hampshire as well as part of our native landscape. Yeah, seeing as forestry is so important here in the in the Granite State. And you can see here's what it's called, white pine blister rust. And it, we have the cycle uh, right life here cycle. for your life cycle. So you can see, and why don't we start seeing as we're close to it in the, in the spring here. And what's, right. what do we have an example So this is here? a white pine sapling and you can see the dead areas it's been affected. In the spring, the spores move over to ribe species, which are basically gooseberries and currants. And by the end of the summer, you start to see evidence on the undersides of the ribes leaves. In the fall, spores move back over to reinfect the white pine. But when they move, they don't just go back to the ones that are infected. They move on to other nearby white pine that are not affected Healthier yet. Healthier trees. Now, you mentioned these are white pine saplings. Right. Do they affect the full-grown trees? Or it's, or? it's much more serious on the saplings, as you pointed out, rather than on the mature trees. Okay. Now, as a result of this disease, there's a... A ban that's been placed, or not a ban, a moratorium, moratorium. I guess. So, what way. happened in the 90s was that you could begin to plant ribe species as long as you had a permit and you only put in certain species and you abided by some guidelines for distance from white pines. But in 2012, 2013, they started to discover some discrete plantings of black currants that were no longer immune to ribes. And so, they've done some surveys and last fall put a moratorium on the planting of any ribe species for a year so that they could spend some time surveying and working with um, people who are already growing ribes to get input for changes in the law and possibly the species planted. Now, basically, you mentioned that this is a preventative measure. And so what is forest and lands looking for people to get in touch with them? Or what's the situation? Well, they're working with, um, they, theoretically, they know everywhere where ribes is been planted because you had to get a permit. So they're checking locations. They're talking to people who grow them commercially. But if you happen to notice any ribes species that have um, these yellow pustules on the bottoms of the leaves towards late summer, it might be smart for you to Get, go online to nhbugs.org and look up white pine blister rust and there'll be a way to get in touch so somebody can check into it for you. All right, and hopefully keep this disease from spreading. That's it for today's Grow It Green. Back to you in the studio.